Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another creative adventure. Today's mission, we are making a cosplay wig with extra long and super chunky braids. Let me show you the details. This is Purple Heart. She's one of the many awesome characters from one of my favorite video game franchise, Neptunia. For my next cosplay, I'm gonna be putting together her new look from the Neptunia Sandran crossover game. Now I've actually done a Purple Heart cosplay before and for that cosplay, I ordered a really nice quality extra long wig that I styled and braided to match the character. And although I did order a good quality, really thick wig, the braids ended up being super tiny. There just wasn't enough volume of hair to make them as thick and chunky as in the original character designs. And when I went to braid them, the length shortened a little bit and on someone who's six feet tall, they just looked a little bit small. So for this time around, I decided to investigate how to make that wig a little bit thicker and longer, or maybe make my own wig. In my quest for knowledge across the internet, I ended up stumbling across a bunch of videos by Europa Queen, showcasing her amazing yarn wigs. The wigs were extra long, super full, and moved really nicely as she moved around. So I thought, okay, maybe I could find a material similar that's a thinner yarn or a string that I could make my own wig. After a trek to a nearby town with a really good specialty yarn store, I found some amazing yarn that would be perfect for a project. It's a microfiber yarn in size three, and if you unravel it, you can actually see that there are six twisted pairs of fine fibers that are used to make up the yarn. If you separate each twisted pair and then straighten it with a flat iron, you end up with a really nice silky strand that looks like fine hair, but a little bit chunkier, kind of like doll's hair, so it works really well for an anime or cartoon look. To cut the lengths of yarn I needed quickly, I set up two tripods about 140 centimeters apart and then unwrapped each ball around the two posts on the tripods. To separate the twisted pairs, I found it easiest to work with a single yarn strand at a time. I would pull one twisted pair out from the strand at a time and pinch the remainder to prevent it from tangling. As I separated each twisted pair, I would stick it down to some masking tape to create my wefts. Once I had a bunch of wefts ready to go, I would then stick them down onto a silicone sheet and then slather them in tacky glue. This was done to secure all the fibers together and I would let it cure overnight. The next day I would peel back the tape and add more tacky glue to make sure everything was super super secure. After the second round of glue was dry, I then went and trimmed down all the wefts to get rid of all the excess glue, so I only had about half a centimeter of glue left. With everything all secured, I then went on to use my flat iron to straighten and fuse all of the fibers together. Oh, oh, oh. 
secure everything even further, I then ran every single weft through my serger. This added the last bit of security that would prevent the glue from tearing and separating the wefts. Now with all the wefts out of the way, I needed to figure out a way to attach them all to a base of some sort. I decided to use a technique that's pretty common in the doll customizing community and made myself a wig cap made out of power mesh. I created the pattern by masking off my paper tape head form and then drawing a seam down the center and the side. I then peeled off the pattern pieces, stuck them to some paper, cleaned them up, and added some seam allowance. Then it was just simply a matter of sewing everything together. To ensure that the wig cap would stay on my head with all the added weight of the yarn wefts, I added a two inch elastic all the way around and secured it to the wig cap with a three step zigzag for maximum stretch and durability. Now we're finally ready for assembly. I started first by gluing down the parting line wefts in the opposite direction so that when they were dry, I could flip them over to hide the seam. After that, I just went around the rest of the head, starting first with the perimeter and then filling it back in with more wefts. To glue the wefts down, I simply used more tacky glue because it's nice and flexible when it dries, and I used push pins to secure the wefts in place while the glue was drying. After one side was done and dry, I repeated the process on the other side. With the braids out of the way, all I had to do left was fill in the rest of the wig. For this part of the wig, I made shorter wefts and glued them down in the same way. I first started with the bangs and did three rows, and then I backfilled in the last few patches.
since I needed a thinner amount of hair on the sides, I ended up actually only gluing three wefts up as well. And then the last portion of the wig cap that I needed to hide, I simply covered with glue and patted down the last layer of wefts on top. Now with all the hard work out of the way, it was time to style the wig. Now, I'm not gonna lie, styling wigs is a lot of work for me. I'm still not super confident in it and I struggle through it quite a lot. The process for this wig is the same as any synthetic wig. You would be using the got to be freezing spray and the got to be spiking glue to create the shapes that you wanted. And I didn't really record this process because again, I find it really frustrating and um, difficult to work through. So I'm just gonna show you the end result with what I ended up with and I'll walk you through some of the things that I found along the way. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the bangs. So I actually ended up having to cut off um, the extra weft. So I have three layers of wefts here and they, it was just way too fluffy. So I only used the top layer to actually shape the wefts and then the rest I kind of used as like a puff to actually make it stay up, which worked out really well. And then a crap ton of spiking glue here in order to actually make the spikes and just kind of cutting away bits that I didn't need to kind of give it a bit more of that anime like look to it. I'm not super great at styling regular wigs. So this was even more challenging for me, but I think it looks really nice overall. Like you still get that look of, oh, it's kind of hair. But then when you look closely, you're like, oh, maybe it's yarn. <laughs> So anyways, I really like the way that this turned out. Um, the sides were a different story though. So the sides were a little bit tricky. Um, so you can still see, so I did use quite a bit of spiking glue to um, prevent the, the ends of the fibers from splaying out and looking like yarn. So it does from a distance kind of look like uh, regular kind of hair strands, but I don't know. I'm not super happy with the way I ended up styling this. I'm not sure if it's maybe just too thick or there's just too much space here, or maybe I need to try and spike it out a little bit. I don't know, I gotta experiment with this, but it's not terrible. It does, like, NEP does tend to have like a weird side chunks here. So it definitely captures that, but I think I need to style it into kind of sections a bit more. Again, same thing here. I had to cut off the extra volume because it was just way too much fiber, um, which was great for the braid, but not so great when you're trying to style the front of the wigs. And then finally is the little poof at the bottom. I actually ended up cutting the original braided poof here because it got all like kind of raggy because again, when you braid, the fibers move up. But I ended up cutting all that out and then I basically stubbed it out with glue and then added in just like regular yarn for filler that I didn't bother separating. I just made like a really long pom-pom and just kind of like glued it in there. And then around it, I added some separated wefts so that, whoop, oh, I messed it up. But anyways, um, I style it around so that you can actually not really see the poofs in the middle. And this has been washed out a little bit, but lots of spray glue and spiking glue held it in place kind of like that and it looks really nice when it's actually done up. And then this is the back part. I think it turned out really, really nice. You can't really see any of the uh, yarn wefts underneath. I do think I needed maybe one more weft in there to kind of cover up, because you can see it's a little bit thin here when I fold it over. But again, with all the spray and stuff, it stays pretty well and like wind doesn't bother it, doesn't stick to anything. And it looks really nice and clean back here. And again, from a distance, it just kind of looks like regular hair, just a little bit thicker. So what do we think? I super love how this turned out. It was a lot of work, but I think it was really worth it just for these nice chonky braids. Like look how chonky that is. It's so nice. And I also really like the way it moves. I don't know, just like it doesn't tangle a lot and it sits really pretty and it looks really great in photos too. It has like a really nice kind of doll kind of cartoony look to it, which is exactly what I was looking for. I love how it turned out and it's definitely an option I'm gonna keep in mind for whenever I have to deal with a really long and kind of difficult to find hairstyle in a synthetic wig. It's gonna be a trade-off though, because it's a lot of work to do. The material cost for this wig is actually pretty cheap. Like each one of these balls of yarn was about five and change. So I ended up spending around $55 on making this wig. Now that obviously doesn't include the time that I spent making it. Um, but cost-wise for materials, it was pretty affordable. Hopefully this video gives you a few alternative ideas on how to make wigs for your own projects. Definitely let me know what you'll be working on if you're gonna use this technique, because I'd love to see it. And I'll see you in the next adventure.